Hi, I'm Jada Monica Drew, and welcome to the Bloom Inclusion Concourse. Today's special guest is Gina Elizabeth Franco. Gina, welcome to Bloom. Thank you for having me. And also, thank you for responding to my many, many, many DMs. Gina is an artist on Instagram, and a lot of people follow her. There are pop-up art um, murals that go up all around the city that I live in, in Greensboro. And I thought that Gina would be a great guest for Bloom Inclusion. And this was pre-COVID. This is pre-COVID, and a lot of things have happened um, post-COVID that I'm, I'm really interested in you sharing with us. But let's just start with you sharing a little bit about who you are and where you're from. Um, I am a North Carolina-based artist, um, born and raised here. Um, I've been in Greensboro since about um, 99. Um, uh, we moved down here from Salisbury, mm -hmm. um, so that's where I'm originally from. Um, and yeah, the, the journey has been um, wild um, and um, just finally getting to the place where um, kind of accepting that I'm an artist and um, feeling comfortable calling myself that. Mm -hmm. um, well, tell us about the journey. Tell us about the wild journey. What led you to the path of, of being an artist? Well, I would tell you it was never on the radar. Um, even as an adult, um, I, I have, was a single mom. Uh, my son is 19 now. Mm -hmm. And um, so for me, it was, you know, you need to have a real job and, and be practical. And, uh, you know, so I did eventually go back to school. Um, for business, so I have a business degree, mm -hmm. um, and so I was just kind of living that way. I was teaching technology for Guilford County Schools, mm -hmm. and um, I would say um, I was probably about 27 or 28. I took an art class at school, um, and I really enjoyed it, like, way too much, but I remember thinking, uh, you know, that this is just for fun. You can't you know, this can't be a job, you know, mm -hmm. just a so, hobby. Right. So I remember, I, you know, when I graduated, I kind of threw all that art stuff away, never thought about being an artist. Um, it wasn't until a year, you know, several years later when I did a mural at the school I was teaching at, mm -hmm. that it kind of like awoke, you know, I just had this, like, I just loved it so much. And it actually turned out really good. Um, and I didn't even know, you know, I had that the ability. Um, and then everybody just, you know, I posted it on Facebook and what was it? Um, it was like a scene, these kids, like it was for a library. So they were reading books. Mm -hmm. They were in like a field. There was a girl in the tree reading. Um, you know, you know, I look at it now and I'm like, okay, wow, I've come a long way. Mm -hmm. Um, but at the time I was like really impressed even with myself. Like, um, and that really is kind of where it started. It, it was a slow, progression though you know it wasn't you know anything like the uh the work you know the amount of work that I do now it was mm -hmm. you know maybe one a year okay. um and to it just finally came to a point where you know I kind of had to make a decision and it was a very easy one um I, I resigned last year and um I haven't looked back um I have no regrets, I have regrets. Mm -hmm. um yep. and wow. here we are <laughs> So not on purpose, you no, just kind of fell in your lap. You were teaching technology, mm -hmm. and now you are a full-time full -time. artist. Right. I love it. Yeah. Now, the first time I met you, um, it was when you were an artist at Sternberger here in Greensboro, one of the residents. And I remember going into your studio, and the artwork that you had then, it really spoke to me and the story behind it, which um, you had a bunch of cigarette buds um, for as an art as an art exhibit, can you tell us about um, what that what it was and, and how you what made you make the decision to have an art exhibit with cigarette books? Um, a very interesting, um, you know, you know, people had a lot of questions about that. Um, I was doing cigarette murals. Um, I probably did four or five, um, just to kind of, and they're just a bunch of cigarette butts, and I was putting it on clothes and putting cigarette butts on trains and drawing them everywhere. And it was, um, you know, people, I remember some, somebody saying that I was a cigarette girl and I was like, <laughs> okay. Um, but really um, it was, for me, it, it meant a lot more than just cigarette butts. Um, my mom, she had passed away from lung cancer um, about three years ago now, um, maybe, yeah, three years ago. And um, so it was like right after that, I just kind of, I just, you know, wanted to, in my, in my mind, I was honoring her. Mm -hmm. Um, and it didn't have to make sense to anybody else. It really was for me and, and it's part of my healing. And, um, 
you know, and then, but I just started to see, you know, a lot of people were reaching out to me and, and telling me their stories, you know, their, their parent, you know, somebody in their family died of lung cancer and kind of started to realize you know, that I was having an impact. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, it was just, it just made it even more important for me to do it because I knew it wasn't the only one. And, um, yeah. That's true. I mean, I, I lost my father to, to cancer. Um, he had lung cancer and it spread in other places in his body. So when I saw the mural and heard the story behind it, the many murals, I thought, wow, this is, you know, it is, a, I think, a, an opportunity for people to heal and to face grief just in a different way, to kind of right. face it head on, literally. Yeah. Um, and I, yeah. and I, I think I would say that. that. I think I was so telling people, I, you know, when I would post, I would about, post it, about it, I would, it, I would you know, I would, I would say grieve, grieve out, loud. out loud. So this mm -hmm. was, yeah, I'm yeah, sharing I'm it with, sharing who, with who, you know, the, the internet, internet and, and the public. And so, you know, I was grieving, but out loud. Um, and it was just, there was just more comfort in that than, than like sitting in a room by myself, like, oh, uh, you know. Um, so yeah, that's how that came about. Well, let's talk about a few more of mm -hmm. your murals, just around Greensboro or anywhere else um, that you have um, murals. I know one of my favorite ones, um, I was just looking through my phone not too long ago, mm -hmm. the one that said, um, I miss you so much. It was oh, a torn yes. out notebook sheet of paper drawn on the side of a building mm -hmm. close to where we are right now in Greensboro right. downtown. And it said, I miss you so much, just in plain mm -hmm. writing. And um, tell, tell us about that, why you, why you decided to, to paint that and, and during the time yeah, I mean, it, you know, I would say the majority of my work is, you know, always response. I'm always res responding to something. Mm -hmm. um, so at that time, it was, you know, locked in. You know, we were, um, you know, COVID, early COVID. You know, everybody was, you know, kind of locked down, staying home. Um, there was a big push for, you know, no, you know, staying in the house, mm -hmm. you know, so. There were weeks there where, you know, I didn't see any of my friends, you know, I couldn't, you know, go see my family. And, um, you know, I just really missed everybody. It was rough. And everything. Like, yeah. I just, oh, I missed restaurants. I missed, you know, so much. And I, you know, I knew I was not the only one. Mm -hmm. um, and the thing about public, you know, public art, it was outside, you know, anyone could have access to it. You know, you can safely <clears throat> interact with the wall, you know, so I thought, you know, there was just, I remember saying, I just want to tell people I miss them. Mm -hmm. I was like, so I'm just going to write it on a big piece of paper. Um, <laughs> so I, I made the, you know, the wall look like a realistic yeah. like sheet of paper that I kind of just wrote it down and, you know, um, and I also dedicated the post to my mom. Um, you know, like I usually, you know, a lot of those murals I've, you know, dedicated to her, but, you know, mm -hmm. just, I just missed everybody and everything. Um, so yeah, it would just, it felt so good to just say it and um and then people were coming and taking pictures and you know they were their caption would let somebody know who that you know that they missed them yeah um or not say anything at all they just you know wanted to share that with other people so that's always encouraging mm -hmm. there are a few more that stand out to me um one in particular you have um 100 signs Mm -hmm. um, down, yes. I think in Midtown. Yes. Um, another one is, um, every little thing is going to be all right. Mm -hmm. Also came up during COVID. Mm -hmm. Um, so tell us about those two, the, the story behind it and, and maybe mm -hmm. any other, um, murals that you have, whether it's on walls that change constantly or mm -hmm. walls that are, you know, just there. Yeah. The Hunter wall, it, it was actually inspired by the song. Um, I'm a hundred percent that you know, um, it, that was it was really popular at the time. You know, it was kind of like this, you know, girl power anthem, mm -hmm. like, you know, and I just really related to it. And every time I would hear it, I would get like kind of hype and, you know, like, yeah, I'm 100 percent, you know, we won't say the word rest. But um, uh, so that's where that. And, and so I just did a huge wall with hundreds, mm -hmm. um, the emoji. Yeah. Um, and like I kind of just imagine, you know, People that would go to that wall, they're, mm -hmm. they're hype and they're, you know, they want to, you know, they just want to be 100%. Um, and so, yeah, that one had a lot of tags from that wall. And, mm -hmm. you know, people were dressing up. Uh, they were shooting music videos out there. Um, really? A lot of interaction <laughs> with that one. Um, so that was that was a fun one. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other one you mentioned, um, Every Little Thing is Gonna Be All Right, was inspired by Bob Marley's song. Mm -hmm. um, and that was during COVID. It was another one of those kind of dreary, 
you know, uncertain times. I had a lot of anxiety, um, as you know, a lot of people were. And, um, you know, I, I just thought maybe somebody would want to hear that, mm -hmm. that everything's going to be okay. I know I did. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so, and that song was one of my mom's favorite songs too. So, um, I just remember hearing that growing up um, and it always kind of put me in a good mood, you know? So yeah. And I just wanted to share that too, mm -hmm. which a lot of my work is um, it's definitely, I would say majority of it is meant to be interacted with. Um, I feel like they don't, they're not really activated unless people go and take pictures and, you know, so that's a really important part of the work. And it speaks volumes, I think to, the story behind it and what it will elicit to other people. Right. Um, and the captions, I mean, when people post in front of the murals, you know, the captions, they're all different, mm -hmm. you know, and it's <clears throat> really, it, it's just, it's amazing to see, um, you know, people going on there and, and you know, talking about things, personal mm -hmm. things, or they're tagging other people and, you know, so it's a really, um, the public is been, you know, really is the my biggest motivation. They motivate me the most. Mm -hmm. um, Shout, Shout out to the public. public. Thank you. Please <laughs> continue to tag. Yeah, I just love being tagged. I love the interaction and um, the engagement and just seeing, you know, people I don't know or I do know, you know, they, it's just everyone, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so that, that makes me think about the type of art that... Um, the, or the type of artist you would call yourself. So would it be a public artist, a muralist, and what's the process? Even before, um, you know, the camera started rolling, you were kind of mm -hmm. sharing with me the process of, of one, actually you finished a, right. a huge mural this week and you explained that to me. So what type of artist would you consider yourself to be and what's the process of your, of your art going up on walls? Um, I would consider myself a public artist. Mm -hmm. um, some people call me muralist um, and that's fine. I do murals, um, but I also do other types of public art. Um, and so I would, I would say public artist. Mm -hmm. um, and the process, it, it varies for every project. Um, but the main, you know, as far as like getting the, the commissions and, you know, there's a lot that go, that's involved with that, writing proposals and mm -hmm. doing sketches and um, you know, let's pause there. Yes. Tell us about the proposal process, commissions yeah. for artists that are that are listening and how can yeah. they um, move through that that process? What's it like? And, uh, you know, I had to kind of teach myself the I guess the ropes um, and uh, and that takes a while. You have to kind of do your research. Um, the easiest thing to do, there's most cities have a um, like an art program mm -hmm. or, a you know, some sort of thing where you can get on a like an email okay um so i sign up for as many of those as i can or that i come across and that way what you, you're being you know every month you'll get sent like um when they have a call for artists or you know something like that um so that's one way there's also another website called publicartist.com mm -hmm. um and they also post um calls for art on there mm -hmm. um so you can register with them and you'll get um, emails for them. Um, sometimes they come to my DM, you know, um, <laughs> thank like you. Um, actually recently, um, there was a company here, um, that reached out to me in my DM on Instagram mm -hmm. and, um, set up a meeting that way. Um, okay. word of mouth. Um, that's why it's really important to, um, you know, treat it like a job. I mean, it is a job. Yeah. Um, so if you want to, people to refer you and you know you have to be professional and you have to show up on time and you have to be organized um and that way they'll you know they'll tell you know you definitely don't want a reputation as you know being late or not doing a very good job well let's 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 dive into um you said a company contacted you mm -hmm. and then you go through processes through cities and then you have mm -hmm. walls where you can kind of pretty much do anything that right. you want and, to do and that, those are for me it's a, a balance like for every, you know, paid job, I like to go and do something kind of for myself, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and that's why I started the Rotating Wall Project, because um, that one is, you know, I can go and express myself, and, you know, I'm not being paid. Um, so, then, you know, there's no really collaborating or anything like that. It's like kind of whatever I want to do. Mm -hmm. So I, those are kind of like my treats. Gotcha. Um, 
they're all treats, but um, I do try to have a, a balance um, because with the, you know, with most paid commissions, there is, you know, you have to be willing to collaborate mm -hmm. and listen. And, you know, you might not want to, you know, you can't just do whatever you want. There's other people involved. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a negotiation process. It is. They're hiring um, you for your your, 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 art, your the day, artistic they, ability, but they want you. what they want. Right. And so mm -hmm. if you're if you're you know I know some artists want to just do what they do, mm -hmm. um, and you know I would just say that maybe you know public art or you know some of these programs wouldn't be a good fit because they they do want to have input mm -hmm. in the project. Um, so you know you you definitely have to you know have some flexibility and. Um, and you know, for my style of art, um, kind of, it varies for every project. I don't have like a specific thing that I do. And what type of materials do you use? Some, I don't think you can kind of go to Home Depot and just, you know, buy a spray paint. <laughs> so what products do you use? I would say mo the majority of what I use on walls is, um, it's professional artist spray paint. Mm -hmm. Um, it's called Montana. Um, and actually there's a store here in Greensboro called Jerry's mm -hmm. and it's really amazing. Um, and if you're a member there, you get like the super cheap prices for spray paint. Cause it can be, you know, upwards of like $8 a can. But if you're a member there, it's like less than $6. So mm -hmm. it's definitely worth it. Um, they, they moved or they opened a year ago Okay. and it was just like, it's just been so convenient cause mm -hmm. they're right down the street. Yeah. But yeah, so Montana spray paint mostly. Okay. That's what I use. Now let's let's switch the the topic a bit. Mm -hmm. The reason, one of the reasons why I really wanted you to be a part of Bloom <clears throat> this year in particular, is because I see from the youngest person, mm -hmm. babies, up into like elders. Mm -hmm. I see pets. I see people of all races, mm -hmm. um, people of of different abilities taking pictures in front of your artwork. Mm -hmm. And so just in the fact that your artwork is so inclusive, um, that's why we really wanted you to be a part of Bloom to kind of share your process. And fast forward to the murder of George Floyd, mm -hmm. um, there was something else that you were able to catalyze. Um, there were tons of murals mm -hmm. downtown, um, messages downtown Greensboro after um, a lot of the restaurants and stores were boarded up. I remember coming back into town and seeing it on Instagram and, and people posting and reposting. And I was just amazed when I got out of the car, hmm. walked around and saw just messages of hope. Hmm. I saw people um, having conversations with one another, asking questions. Um, there was just so much inspiration and um, unity hmm. that came out of not just that moment, I wouldn't even call it a movement, I would call mm -hmm. it like a staple that happened in Greensboro that has so many effects, I think, moving forward. So tell us about what happened, um, mm -hmm. how you catalyzed and organized so many people to be a part of it. Well, um, <clears throat> well I kind of started off just kind of feeling like, um, like I needed to do something. Um, you know, I was watching the night before, there were some, you know, some there was protesting, and then there was some riots kind of mixed in, some vandalism to the downtown. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I have friends that are shop owners down there. I um, also have friends that were protesting. You know, I kind of know a little bit of everybody. Um, so for me, it was just, you know, well, how, how can, you know, I wanted to reach out the next day and see if they, you know, maybe needed some help cleaning up. I wasn't really sure. I just had this feeling like I needed to do something. Um, by the time I got downtown, um, Pretty much every building was boarded up because mm -hmm. they had they had boarded up through the night, like four o'clock, five o'clock in the morning. They were they started to board up. Um, so when I drove down there, it just you know it was just the sinking feeling of you know I don't know. I just saw you know it's lots of plywood and um, you know I, I, the idea for me it wasn't to like I wanted to make the plywood pretty. Um, for me, it was like, okay, how, how can we continue this protest? Mm -hmm. um, but like visually, so I was like, well, you know, visual protesting. And um, so I was like, well, we can use the plywood, you know, since they're just here all of a sudden. Um, and so I reached out to uh, Jen Graff. She's Vintage to Vogue owner. Um, mm -hmm. And I was like, can I do a mural on your plywood? And she was like, absolutely. You know, um, so that's kind of how it started. It was very kind of like, okay, and then I get there and there's, uh, you know, I go to my studio, I get all, everything that's in my studio, I threw in my truck. 
because I didn't know what I wanted to do. Or, mm -hmm. you know. So I just threw everything in there, came back, and um, there was, I ended up doing three murals. Okay. Um, I started about four o'clock and mm -hmm. got done before curfew. What'd they say? What was um, on them? So the first one was the Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just black and white. Um, the second one was Use Your Voice. Mm -hmm. And the one in the middle was like a peace sign. It was on her door. Um, you know, the gate, it was kind of like a gate door. Um, so that kind of went in the center. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, because it, it wasn't like I wanted to do flowers or any, you know, like I said, I didn't want to make the plywood look pretty. I just, you know, I wanted to continue the, you know, I felt like we still need, you know, there was a lot of work to do. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just kind of my way because I'm an artist. That's how I think. Um, and so I posted it on Instagram um, when I was done and, you know, I kind of, suggested um you know that the other artists you know mm -hmm. to come out i was like there's plenty of plywood out here you know just you know come use your voice and you know let's continue the protesting let's you know whatever and um i just kind of just threw it out there um and i would say like well, yeah within 24 hours you know i had so many dms and like artists reaching out mm -hmm. um and so the next day we me and jen the shop owner we kind of realized like we had we had to organize it mm -hmm. wasn't even there was no question at this point we had so many people wanting to come out and paint and then we had on top of that we had business owners that were reaching out wanting mm -hmm. their plywood painted okay because they want it, it was really important that they they wanted people to know that we didn't board up you know that for any other reason you know just out of necessity because the glass was broken right you know but we are still here and mm -hmm. we are so they were in full support mm -hmm. of the protest because the protest was going on all week and even though they were closed they still wanted to be a they part still of it wanted to, how can open. we let the public know that we stand with them okay and so they were reaching out like we you know and so we we were kind of like so we conquered and divided we she took care of the business owners mm -hmm. and i agreed to kind of take care of the artists and i mean I, you know looking back i still don't know how we we managed it because you're i mean I still don't know because you're, you're in it and you're going. And the adrenaline is there. It was thick, just yeah. um, definitely a lot of adrenaline. And you know, I would say over the period of that week, um, oh, I mean, we I, we haven't really counted. I think we did over definitely did over a hundred murals mm -hmm. um, or window or plywood panels, um, and we literally had everybody, every like you said, like every age, every race, every. Um, you know, people who weren't even artists. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had a, a very good chunk of artists that came out. Um, and and were they, they all just from here? Or were they from different places no, across we did, the state? we had um, from a couple of, you know, Charlotte. Um, there was a couple other people that were that kind of saw what was going on and mm -hmm. just got in their car and came down. Um, but, yeah, so we managed to do this, you know, without money. You know, it was important for us Um because we didn't, you know, first we didn't have time to organize like and fun, a and fundraise, right? A fundraiser. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so we knew that, you know, the, the people that were reaching out to us, they, you know, they had the same goal as we did. Mm -hmm. They just wanted to use their voice. Um, so nobody was asking. Nobody even imagined being paid. They mm -hmm. they wanted to do this, and they were bringing their own supplies. Um, but what we started realizing is too that we, you know. You know, I wanted to make it easier, even easier for okay. the artist or anybody. You know, we had family show up. There was a, a a lady. She had like it was her and like three kids. They show up and you know they want to paint, but they don't have paint. Mm -hmm. and I was like, that's kind of what I was like, oh, you know. So I was like, hey, you know, give me an hour, mm -hmm. and I was like, you know, I and within an hour I had her, you know, some paint, some brushes. So that's kind of when we were like, you know, and then we we started seeing a lot of that, you know, people are just kind of walking up. Just because they want to be a part they of it. They just wanted to be a part of it so much. And do something. And so, yeah, and we had, yeah. I mean, we had people dropping off, I mean, community members dropping off waters, paint. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one guy brought pizza. Mm -hmm. So we run around on the cart, handing out pizza to people, painting. Um, you would, it would, it, it looked like it was, you know, planned a year, you know, like we had all this time, but it was just, because it was just pure passion. Like mm -hmm. people, you know, it's pretty amazing what, you know, what happened. And some of the artwork is now featured in museums. Is that right? Yes. Um, they, some of them. So I know that George Floyd that was done by Jenna Rice, that is going to 
the African American Museum um, in DC. The Smithsonian. The Smithsonian. Wow. Yes. Um, and then we locally, the Greensboro Historic Museum, they've collected 12 pieces. Okay. Um, and one of those is the, the, the first one, which was the Black Lives Matter mm -hmm. I painted. Um, and yeah, several, and yeah, I think they have 12 total. And then the North Carolina Museum of Art, which is in Raleigh, mm -hmm. is scheduled, I think they're collecting six total from our, from our. Wow. Because we're housing them, the ones that we, you know, because they were starting to come down, mm -hmm. you know, it was another thing we had to organize. Like, oh, well, where were we going to put these? Mm -hmm. um, so we were able to. they're huge, right? They're I mean, huge. like 10 by and 10 plywood. And they're not even, it's big, like, I didn't even know they were that big till I had to carry one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, and so, yeah, we had to carry, we, we moved all of them into like a big storage building or mm -hmm. a, not a storage building, but a, a building that's not being used. And we had to, it was physically, um, a lot. Um, but again, you know, I'm not going to ask the artists to come pick it up. You know, we, we, you know, we provided this in a platform and, um, I felt like I had a responsibility to the artist to, to make sure that these are preserved. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't want them to end up in a dumpster and, um, you know, and most artists don't have the capacity to store them mm -hmm. because they're huge. Um, so me and Jen just kind of worked and worked and worked and, you know, she was able to, she was a big part of like securing the space, mm -hmm. um, so we can you know, just until we figure it out. Um, and we're still figuring it out. We still have over probably 50 pieces 50. Wow. that are left that are still there in storage yeah. um, that we have to find homes, not just any home either, you know, somewhere where the story can be um, told years mm -hmm. from now and um, on display. So we, we don't really have a plan yet, um, but we're going to start, you know, we're going to have to start to reach out to, you know, entities and, schools and and just try to find um somewhere for them to go and this is a lot of work to do on the fly in a very innovative way and mm -hmm. and also inclusively because you share that you put a call out mm -hmm. you didn't say you have to be an artist that's well known all mm -hmm. over the world you didn't say you even have to be an artist you just mm -hmm. say hey come and be a part of this because mm -hmm. you felt like it was something that was needed to be done. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. um, I just applaud you for that. And mm -hmm. and not even, you know, when I reached out to you, you said, well, I don't want to take credit for it because I'm just, you know, I just had an idea right. and, you know, people came to the call. But, mm -hmm. I, you know, I think it's important to know for people to know how much goes into something like this mm -hmm. and um, to really understand the story behind it, because it's so inspiring. And I mm -hmm. think the more we understand each other's stories mm -hmm. and the more we come together to do just what you did mm -hmm. um you along with um the business owner you all just feel the need one of the many needs then mm -hmm. and um it's just been so inspiring to see the community come together it was it was all right gina so these these COVID times bring out a lot of innovation mm -hmm. so we've talked about the um the street art that you put up around missing people and everything's going to be okay and how you also help to lead thousands of artists and community members coming together to give inspiration through art. Hmm. What else have you done innovatively since COVID? Hmm. So I actually kind of create like, uh, so masks, you know, I, I know they're not, I feel like they're not going anywhere for a while. So we should just go ahead and have fun. Mm -hmm. um, and so the, I had an idea, like I wear, um, I love scrunchies, mm -hmm. which I, I have one here. It's just a scrunchie, but um, I usually have several on my arm. Mm -hmm. um, totally eighties baby, like you know. Um, and so I had this random idea. It was like midnight, um, and I was like, "Well, I want a scrunchie that I could wear like on my arm, but it's also a mask." Okay. And then it also you can also tie your hair up, so a functional scrunchy masks. Mm -hmm. um, so there was a girl that, w that was on my Instagram that d makes masks. Mm -hmm. So I messaged her <laughs> and, um, and I was like, Hey, I know this is random, but I have this crazy idea. I was like, do you think, you know, I was like, can you make it look like a scrunchy, but function as a mask, but also really function as a scrunchie? Mm -hmm. And she was like, I don't know. You know, she, you could tell she was just like, I don't know. Anyway, long story short, she like within two days, she had it. Mm -hmm. She had like a, um, I don't know what you would call that a sample. Mm -hmm. Um, and she brought it to me while I was painting downtown, um, last week. And like, I was flipping out cause it was like exactly what I wanted. Um, so yeah, so that was, um, yeah, that was my 
you know, having fun with masks, mm -hmm. um, you know, just trying to be functional and cool and yeah, safe. Mm -hmm. And safe, right, right. So you just finished a big mural downtown, mm -hmm. um, which is one that was commissioned. Yes. Um, by the way, let's let's go back a little bit. Mm -hmm. Speaking of commission and, and kind of doing things out of necessity, mm -hmm. you all were approached multiple times. Um, there's a rumor going around about you all being oh. approached multiple times about people wanting to invest in the artwork that went up downtown after the, the murder of George Floyd. Mm -hmm. And you all didn't take... Mm -hmm. any funds why is that um you know it, it we kind of we were approached pretty early on um by a couple of people who wanted to give us money mm -hmm. um for stuff and you know for for us it just didn't feel it just didn't feel right like we didn't want it to get muddy and you know there would everyone you know was out there for the same calls and um you know it, it had nothing to do with money mm -hmm. um and we just didn't want to I guess mess with the message. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, that sounds like a t-shirt. Don't mess with the message. Don't mess with the message. You know, I definitely. <laughs> you start free yeah, there we go. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to. I forgot where I was. Okay. Um, no, I like that though. Um, but yeah, just you know, we didn't want. You you don't know. I don't know some of these companies. Like, what if they, you know, what if we find later on that they are part of some organization that's you know like racist or you know and then they're tied to our you know to mm -hmm. this and it was just like the the easiest way to not have that problem to make sure that it's so to pure. make sure it's pure mm -hmm. and um you know community-based that we just couldn't we just didn't mm -hmm. um so tell me about the mural that you just finished, like two yes. days ago, <laughs> yes. downtown Greensboro. You said it was one of the biggest, you think it's one of the biggest that you've ever yeah, painted. Yeah, it's definitely, I think, one of the biggest. Um, definitely the tallest, um, highest. Um, but yeah, so, the, I, you know, I was really, I mean, you know, I consider Greensboro my hometown. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's, it's like a dream come true for me to do a Greensboro mural. Um, and so, you know, it was actually decided, um, I work with DGI, I collaborated with them. Um, and this was eight months ago when we first decided to do the mural. Mm -hmm. Um, flash forward to now, you know, after the, the movement and, you know, everything that happened downtown, it was time for us to, to decide like, okay, you know, let's, let's try to figure out a date to start the mural. Well, by that point, the original design that was, um, done mm -hmm. and everybody had agreed on it I just tossed it I told him I said I can't I can't do it anymore I was like downtown is just different like mm -hmm. I have to rework this entire design so it's like a hundred percent not nothing like the original um interesting and I had to, like I there was no part I couldn't even look at the old one it would just felt so you know I was like how I really it was important for me to capture the spirit mm -hmm. of of downtown that I knew you know that I felt um, and I didn't have that, you know, I, had, I didn't have that experience yet in the original design. So I had to rework it. Um, and they were t totally fine with that. They mm -hmm. understood, you know, why I needed to do that. And um, so the end product is just a combination of, you know, definitely um, Greensboro historically, you know, with the civil rights, mm -hmm. um, you know, I wanted to symbolize that in there. Um, but also currently, you know, full circle to our current um, the current movement that we're mm -hmm. in right now. Yeah. Um, I felt like I needed to have both of those in there. Um, and then of course your, all your other downtown Greensboro elements. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, yeah, and that's the finished product. Um, and yeah, I love it. It's, but it's so big. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to go take a selfie in front of it. I'll make sure I tag you. Yes. Uh, my brother, my twin brother went and took a picture on top of his car mm -hmm. yesterday on his truck. And I would say that that's probably the best angle. So if you're feeling froggy, um, go <laughs> hop, hop, on the truck. On, hop on the truck because you, I mean, it is because it's big, yeah. uh, but no, there's plenty of places you can get. Um, I, I want to mark areas that people like. Mm -hmm. that they find is a good angle. That's cool. um, I was going to do like a little stencil kind mm -hmm. of um, to kind of find that best angle. So if anyone has any. Um, it's all about the angles. Yeah, it's all about the angles. So that's why you have to tag me so I can see. Um, and then you like can where you're, Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So let's end with this. Share okay. um, with any artist that might be watching us. Mm -hmm. um, 
give some advice. You know, what advice would you give an artist in um, in general around how to follow their dreams mm -hmm. and follow their calling and really stay true to to their passion of art? Um, I would say that nobody is going to come find you sitting in your studio. Mm -hmm. um, and that that was you know definitely how I thought it worked. You know, I was like, oh, I'm good at art. They'll just come find me. No, you have to put yourself out there. Um, share your content. Um, like I said, that I've been I've gotten several jobs just from Instagram, mm -hmm. just from sharing my photos and stuff like that. So you know, just you got to put it out there, even if you don't. You know, if you don't think it's even if you don't think it's that good, just be, get comfortable with sharing your work. Mm -hmm. um, put it in as front of as many people as you can, because you never know. Um, also, yeah. put, get it out Use there. Use it as a tool. So yeah. It, it can be a tool. And what I'm taking from this is don't mess with the message. And don't mess with the message. <laughs>